Hi, assalamu alaikum and a very good morning. So now we are in chapter 4, chemical bonding. And now we are in the subtopic of 4.3, orbital overlap and hybridization, part 1 of the video. So in this video, we're going to learn about the drawing and the description for the formation of the sigma and pi bond from the overlapping of the orbital. Next, we're going to explain the formation of the sigma and pi bond that exists in the molecule. So the learning outcome of A and B will be covered in this video which is in this part 1 of the video. So, without any further ado, let us start with part 1 of the video first. So, valence bond theory. So, valence bond theory basically stated that a covalent bond is going to be formed when we pair two electrons with the opposing spin in the regions of overlap of atomic orbital between the two atoms. So, you can imagine that, let's say if you have the hydrogen molecule here, so when hydrogen molecule, which is the hydrogen atom will have the 1s orbital overlapping with another orbital of the hydrogen, which is 1s. So the region of overlapping will involve electron of the opposing spin. So when they have electron that exists in the opposite direction, what they're going to form here is the sigma bond. Okay, so this is represented in terms of the single bond, and this is represented by the orbital overlapping which represent the sigma bond and this overlapping region which is here will have a high electron density and we in this chapter we're going to look into two types of bond which is the sigma bond as well as the pi bond so the sigma bond will be covered in the next slide all right so let us look into the sigma bond first so sigma bond so for the definition of the sigma bond, it resulting from the end-to-end -end overlap. Maksudnya, overlap tu memang real, memang berlaku secara pertendihan yang nyata. So it's a real overlapping. And it involves a high electron density along the bond axis. And since the single bond are sigma bond, then it is quite easy for the molecule that having a single bond to be protected. Okay? So let us look into the example. So let's see if we have the hydrogen molecule as I mentioned earlier. So since we are talking about valence bond theory, so we're going to focus on the valence electronic configuration. So you know that hydrogen, okay, so hydrogen atom will have one electron and another hydrogen atom will have one electron. So the electronic configuration here will have one S1 and here will also be one S1. So when we draw the orbital diagram, what we're going to get is one S like this, and the hydrogen 2 here will also be one S. So when we draw the orbital, one S here and one S here, and then when they overlap together, they're going to be an uh, end to end overlap, which is pertindihan yang nyata, memang nampak. And because of that, this region of overlapping will be known as the sigma bond. And this is equivalent to the H single bond H here, which is a sigma bond as well. Okay, so this happened between the S orbital. And it can also happen between S and P orbital. For example, for the molecule of HF. Okay, as mentioned, hydrogen will have the electronic configuration of 1S1. Meanwhile, for fluorine, will have 9 electron, right? So it's going to have an uh, electronic configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2p5. Okay, so now we are dealing with the, uh, for the bond to be formed, we are dealing with the valence electron. So we are looking at the valence electron here, which is 2s2 and 2p5. So we're going to focus on this configuration here. So when we draw the orbital diagram, 1s1 and then 2s2 and 2p5 here, so this um, electron here and this electron here can overlap together. And when they overlap, they're going to be in different direction to show that the electron will have different um, spin and they have unique quantum numbers. Okay, so 1s will have a spherical shape and for this thing, you can choose, uh, you can imagine it to be like, for example, 2px here, 2py here, and 2pz here. So this, um, you can also 
basically it's up to you whether you want to decide it to be 2PZ here, 2PX here, or 2PY here. But in this case, I'm just going to assume it to be like this. Okay, but it is entirely up to you. Okay, so let's say if I decided this one is 1S overlapping with 2PZ, then I know that my Z direction is going to be on uh, this uh, angle here. Okay, so it happens on this axis. So when the 2PZ orbital overlapping with 1S orbital, when we move it to closer enough together, so what they're going to happen is that they're going to be a region of overlapping. So this region of overlapping will create a sigma bond which is labeled as like this. And this is equivalent with the hydrogen single bond fluorine labeled with a single with a sigma bond here. Okay? And this is how the overlapping of S and P orbital will create a sigma bond when they have a end-to-end -end overlap. Now we're going to look into the overlapping between P and P orbital. So this can happen for the fluorine and fluorine atom. So as mentioned, the fluorine will have the configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2p5. But we need to focus on the valence electron only. So when we draw the um, orbital diagram here, what we're going to get is 2s2, 2p5. And this is what we are interested in, which is our 2p z orbital, for example. So when the 2p z orbital overlaps together, so when they overlap, what's going to happen here is that they're going to be a region of overlapping or region of intersection. So one going to be on the different direction and the other must be in the opposite spin. And this is going to create a sigma bond level with a single bond here with a sigma bond here. Okay, and this usually be written in the center of the overlapping here. Okay, so label with sigma and label it with sigma. Okay, and sometimes it is better for us to write the F in the center of the orbital to show that um, the region of overlapping involved is in the fluorine atom. Okay, now we're going to focus on the formation of the pi bond. So for the formation of pi bond, it results from the side-to-side -side overlap and this occurs in molecule with the multiple bond. And do remember that in the multiple bond, in the multiple bond, one of the bond is sigma. The other is gonna be the pi bond. Okay, so let's say if you have double bond, okay, so it can be like oxygen molecule, for example, the first one gonna be the single the sigma bond, the others will be pi bond. Okay, tak kisah mana -mana. So you can put it sigma here or pi bond pi here, doesn't matter. Okay, similarly, for example, if you have the nitrogen atom, okay, so the first one, you can decide whichever you want. The first one is going to be the sigma bond, and the other is going to be pi bond. Okay, and the pi bond can only happen in the multiple bond. And, okay, and the pi bond here, because it is, it has a really strong bond in between two atoms, then it's going to restrict the rotation and also restrict the movement. Alright, so let us look into the formation of the pi bond. So pi bond can occur, for example, in the oxygen molecule. So for oxygen, we have 8 proton, which is 8 electron in the neutral state. So when we draw the electronic configuration, we're going to have 1s2, 2s2, and 2p4. So when, since we have 2, so we're going to write it two times. Okay, so oxygen 1 and oxygen 2. But now we're going to focus on the valence electron only. So we have 2s2 and then 2p4 and then 2s2 and 2p4. So from here, this, board, this electron and this electron can form together to form sigma bond, for example. And this bond here, this electron and this electron here will form to will overlap together in order to form a pi bond. Okay, so you can imagine it to be like, for example, 2px here, and then 2py here, and then 2pz here. Okay, 
So let's say if I wanted to change this, I wanted it to be pi here, and then I wanted this one to be sigma. So what I can do is that I have my oxygen, uh, I have my oxygen atom, and then you know that the two pz will have the shape of like this, which is a dumbbell shape. Okay, so two pz, and then I got another oxygen atom, oxygen number two, and then I have two pz. Okay, so this two pz and two pz, one electron from this oxygen, another at the another electron from the other oxygen will overlap together in order to form a sigma boy. And then I have the 2py. So you know that uh, in the chapter 2, you have learned that the dumbbell shape is going to have three directions. So like this, like this, or like this. Okay, depending on the axis that you have uh, decided. Okay, for example, z here, x here, or y here. So it depends on the direction that you are looking at. Okay, so when I involve 2pz and 2pz, so I need to be consistent with the shape. And now I'm doing the 2py. So the 2py will have this shape, right? So it's going to be like this. And then like this for the first oxygen and then for the second oxygen i'm going to have another 2py okay so we're going to be like this and then like this so uh, for the valence electron they're going to be a region of intersection or overlapping but the overlapping happens by side by side overlapping because it they did up overlap secara nyata. Okay? But the overlapping can occur because it involves electron. So one electron on the clockwise direction, another electron on the anti-clockwise direction. And this uh, overlapping here will create a pi bond because it is a side-to-side -side overlapping. And that is why in the oxygen, we have a double bond. So the first bond here is a single bond, and the next bond here is the pi bond. All right. Now we're gonna look into the formation of pi bond in the nitrogen. So nitrogen will have seven electron. So the electronic configuration is gonna be one s two two s two and then two p three. So since we have two nitrogen, so we're gonna write it one more time, which is like this. And since we are talking about the valence bond theory, we need to focus on the valence electronic configuration. So our focus is on the valence electron. So we have nitrogen number 1, 2s2, 2p3, and then the nitrogen number 2 is going to be 2s2, 2p3. So the first electron here can form pi bond sigma bond up to you so let's say i put pi bond here and then here another pi bond and then here is the sigma bond okay and as mentioned we have a uh, different p orbital we have px py and pz so for the nitrogen let's say my two pz here to be something like this and then two pz then 2pz, so when they overlap together and they're going to be end to end overlap, which is a real overlapping, a sigma bond is going to be formed. And then I have my 2py in this direction, and then my 2py, which is in this direction. So make it nicer. Okay, so this, my, this one is my 2py, and then this one is my 2py. So one electron in the clockwise direction, another electron in the anti-clockwise direction. And this can overlap and form a pi point, the first pi point. And then I have my 2pz, uh, 2px. So my 2px comes from this direction. 
Okay, so I have like this. So one electron on the anti-clockwise direction, another electron in the clockwise direction, and the other electron in the anti-clockwise direction. So this and this can form together a pi bond. Similarly, here to here. But we just level it one time. And this is equivalent to our nitrogen molecule, which has a pi bond. So the first one, or up to you, you can choose wherever you want. So this one going to be, for example, like this, right? The center going to be the sigma bond. And then the, we have the pi bond and pi bond here. Okay. So this is how we create a sigma bond and pi bond. So remember, sigma bond can be formed from the end-to-end -end overlap. And the pi bond can be formed by the side-to-side -side overlap. Okay. So I think that's all for today's video. See you again some other time. Bye.